Rugby AM is brought to you in association with Reactive Insurance for your home and life insurance needs. Welcome to Rugby MTV, the very first live show. We're joined by a fantastic panel of co-hosts and of course, studio guests tonight. It's been a real journey to get here and thank you for coming along, supporting us through this journey and joining us right here on TV. Gonna start with the ladies first, the beautiful Lauren Walker, everybody. Hi. Was you literally married to the game of rugby league. For my sins, yes. Chef Walker's wife, the lucky man that he is. Well, he is lucky man, Chef Walker's better half. I've got to talk about my PIC now, my partner in crime, the big mum himself. I found you begging two years ago at Edinley, and look at us, we made it to TV, Keithy. We actually made it. He found me in the gutter, came along, sold the show. Exceptional show, so thank God we made it. And, uh, and this is the start of something big. Now do you believe, Keith? You took, you took some persuading, Seymour. I love you did take man. some persuading. I love you, big man. Thank you for taking me under your wing. Right, on the end, he's a rubber man, he's a legend, he's a funny guy, the Wagga Taurus. Wayne yeah. Godwin, everybody. Yeah. Wagga, I have never met anybody who don't like you. I think that's the best compliment yeah. I give you. you, you you're, the lover, you're the lovable rogue of rugby league. Try my best, Simo. Just, uh, just a typical cast lad. Uh, just like to have fun and uh, get out there and make, make friends, mate. We're going to send you out all over the country, yep. making new friends, meeting different people. Are you excited for the show, Wagner? Yeah, I can't wait. I hope uh, I can't wait to go into Cast Town Centre and really promote that kind of place and uh, have a bit of banter with the fans and, and the club. I can't wait to see you, mate. Cheers, mate. We'll go to the uh, legend that is well, now. Things turned around for us on Rugby AM when we, we went to the Almighty and we prayed to God and they sent us Jamie Jones Buchanan. Jones hey. I'd just like to clarify, Alex, uh, that my God is uh, Christianity. Obviously, I got a lot of way grounds and I get that confused which religion I am. Uh, but I saw, <laughs> saw Keith going around uh, really upset as you said you picked him up from the gutter and he was driving his Audi R8 at the home office and basically <laughs> the money that he was drawing wasn't enough to get in there and back and he was just going around in circles poking. So I've come along and uh, through God's providence, God's grace, we're, we're here on TV. Typical Bramble lad, you've got a cap on tonight. Cheers for that, Jonesy. We're all, we're all smartened up. I've got an head like a coffee bean and I saw, and I saw Keith. I thought we were on set of Hitman 2 and I saw Keith here, so I thought I'd put a, a cap on, be a bit different. We've all got our ties on tonight. You're representing Leeds Rhinos. I am there. Leeds Rhinos, bored and bred through and through, Leeds lad. Um, from the Big Apple, Bramley, uh, <laughs> west side, side of Leeds. I get a nosebleed when I'm out of there, so, but I'm really happy to be here in Huddersfield. Right, tonight, and our final co host uh, introducing the current Wakefield skipper, the bearded wonder, Mr. Danny Kermond. <laughs> Good evening guys, uh, it's nice to have a suit on, last time uh, my tag had been buzzing last time I had to <laughs> this time, so it's nice to be uh, here and enjoy myself. Kermot, you're going to be joining the team uh, every month and you're going to be looking around the world at social media in the Rugby League world, because we know it's a big part of what we do, Twitter, Facebook, Vines and all that. You've been digging deep this month. I have, yeah, I've got some uh, real beauties for us actually, a bit of videos, Instagram videos, few tweets, even a couple of Snapchats, you know, I like my Snapchats, Alex, so, <laughs> you know, I've thrown a couple of them in there as well. Are we naming and shaming tonight, boy? Yeah, we've got uh, a few tight guys, you know, we like uh, to look for the tight rugby players, so we've got a couple of them in, and then we're looking at the uh, top five vainest of Super League tonight as well. Right, welcome to the show, we're going to crack on now and uh, talk about the issues within the game. Before we start though, can I just say, you're all looking very dapper tonight. Well, Lauren, you know, we, we thought we'd make an effort and a big thanks today <laughs> to Yorkshire menswear of uh, Rodley, just around the corner from uh, Jones's house. We put a plea out on our Facebook page to say, please, we're on TV, we're all skin, we're all poor, <laughs> give us some suits. And they answered the call, we prayed to God and Jonesy, what a, what a bloke Dennis is. Absolutely, he's a fantastic lad, he's from Bramley, isn't he, LS13, so he's bound to be, but he's uh, looked after us, he's got some really nice suits, it's not often we get a chance to wear them, and looking forward to it. Wagga, well, give us a twirl, let's have, let's have a look at that fine suit. Oh, what do you reckon people, make some noise. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Tracy. What I saw, hope for no. Open keep, up. Keep I'm saying though the tie, the tie doesn't quite look that good though. Are you kidding it? me? Just be Rams, mate. <laughs> Championship. <Born and Berkey. laughs> Thank you very much, Keith. Um, today earlier on, we should have had a guest here, um, the big man himself, the, the crazy, mad, extravagant Doctor Marwan Kukash that he is. Uh, he couldn't make it to the show tonight, but he's promised us he's going to come to the next show and have a bit of a debate. So, me and Jonesy got in the car, didn't we? I followed Jonesy. Jonesy is officially the worst driver in the world, by the way. I followed Jonesy all the way down to Salford. And you mean you actually went out of Yorkshire? I, I, know, I know you're not a fan of Lancashire, are you? <laughs> oh! <laughs> Just for the record, Lancashire people, I love Lancashire. I love hot pots. I love you all. It's from me to you. But right now, we're going to go to Salford and see what the good doctor had to say to us today. My name is Jeremy Jones Buchanan, I'm here at Rugby AM. Unfortunately, the good Dr. Marwan Kukash couldn't be in the studio with us tonight, but he's given up his time this afternoon to share some of his experiences and some of the thoughts that he's got in Rugby League. It's a real pleasure to be here, Marwan. Thank you for uh, giving up a few hours to talk to us. Anytime, mate. I'm absolutely delighted to be part of this, and I look forward to being in your studio in the, near, in the very near future. We were just talking earlier that a lot of rugby league fans have got this belief that you made uh, money out of horse racing, but actually horses are just one of your big passions and actually you're uh, called a doctor because you're a doctor in engineering. That's correct. R racing is like rugby. is an opportunity to waste my money on in order to spend my money. Um, my money was made through uh, engineering, through property development and other business uh, ventures. Middle pitch, that will really get you some abuse. You, you um, bought into the idea of becoming investing in Salford after just two games. You only watched two games of rugby league and then you was hooked. What, what do we need to get more people like yourself hooked on the game? Well, it's quite easy. And I keep saying to, to people, you know, it's, it's one of those games, right? If you just tell people to go to, uh, for a rugby league, you know, it might be hard for them to understand how exciting it is. You need to dra not drag them in, right? But I think once they are in, it's easy for them to stay and, you know, to come back. The challenge is to, to bring them in first time. Now, to do that, you need to make a rugby league part of an event. For example, some of the things we'll be doing this year is having ladies' day, right. right, whereby we'll have other events going on alongside the match that will attract ladies to come into uh, to the stadium and once they are in the stadium and see the they see these fit fantastic looking athletes <laughs> who would resist c the com uh, coming back absolutely true um mate you're a very intelligent guy you're very savvy when it comes to money and obviously from middle east i've got a bit of a question for you um I, when, a few years ago back in 2008 Jimmy Peacock had this idea of investing in iraqi dinas <laughs> and uh, at the time at the time we uh we thought it was a great idea because the Iraqi dollar, or the pound, the dinar as it's called, uh -huh. back in biblical times, it was worth about 1.8 to, to the pound, so it was worth quite a lot. But obviously the war broke out, uh, which you'll know a great deal about, and I've fa since found out that I've got 1,100,000 Iraqi dinars, worth 500 quid when I bought them, worth 600 pound now. I tried to weigh them in, but since the army pulled out, nobody will take them anymore. Do you know how I can get shut of them? I'm sure quite a lot of people back in Iraq would uh, love to use them as wallpaper. You know, there are, you know, these are becomes collector. I'll buy some of you later on. I have no problem with that. Yes, it was either that or the other suggestion. We'll, we'll go to that wage department and give that to Kevin Lockwood for his first wages. <laughs> I, I, I don't suppose Kevin Lockwood know what an English pound looks like, so it'd be on a, it'd be on a decent wage, so we'll uh, give him some Iraqi dinas. Fascinating views from the good doctor there. Thank you for everyone down at the Salford Red Devils for making us so welcome today. Um, welcome to the Rugby AM Sheds. Jones, we're inside the sheds. We've been building the brick wall all day. But what I think we need is some shirts to decorate. So, Keefe, Jones, you're going to bring some shirts down. Anyone out there wants to bring any shirts for us to represent inside the studio, please bring them down. It's to the Reactive Insurance Sheds. Right now, we're joined by the main man himself, Mr. Tony Abbott. Welcome to the show. Welcome. Hi Tony. How you doing fella? How are you going? Um, I just wanted to ask you a few questions about 
um, business in rugby league. And one of the things that Marlon talked about was his golden ticket idea. Have you, have you heard about his golden ticket idea? He's so mad, that man, Gorm, what's he said? Um, <laughs> do you want to explain it, Shimon? The golden ticket basically um, allows every team in Super League a golden ticket. It's worth 300 grand and you can spend it on a marquee player off the salary cap. If you don't want to spend it on a player, any club can buy your ticket off you for another marquee player. So Salford could, in fact, Marwan could say, I'll have five uh, golden tickets, give 1.5 million away to other clubs and have five marquee players off the cap. That's his basic idea, to attract better players into the game. What's your thoughts on that, Tom? I think, I think if, if you can afford them, um, then why not? Uh, I think where the game's going at the moment, I think you know, so clubs are trying to do things that they can't necessarily afford and you know, the rumours as you know, spending next year's um, distribution, you know, as long as we can afford it out of our own pockets, then fine. But if we're going to ruin the game in terms of financial aspect, then, then I disagree. Matt, that's my big question to you. Completely honestly, is rugby league a viable business investment? You're a businessman yourself, you've done very well for yourself for working harder and harder for years. You've got involved with rugby, but is it a viable business investment? Two answers. If you're a fan, no. Absolutely not. Um, but if you run it like a business, then possibly, possibly, you know, but you know, I'm a big fan of putting back what you earn, you know, and don't spend what you haven't got. Um, so yeah, it can, but you've got to run it like a business for sure. Do you not think that the owners do need to be fans of like Marwan's come in, he's, he's got all this money and he's looking to spend it, but basically he needs to be a fan, doesn't he? Yeah, I, I, think, I think you can be passionate. You know, um, you know, I can only talk for the ball that I'm involved in. You know, we're all very passionate and we're, you know, we're fans, but we, we tend to run the club like a business. You know, you can't spend what you haven't got. Would you like it to be that way, where you can, the Marwans of this world can be so, you know, we don't like to talk about football, but the Chelsea, where they, they've got unlimited amount of money, would it be great for that to happen in rugby? I guess so. I think it ruined the game in the end. Um, but, you know, I spent, you know, me and Simo have, have both spent time in Oz recently and you know and the way they seem to do it over there maybe if we brought that back over here then why not i uh, obviously you're a southerner from your accent you're from down south we've, we've tried for a long time to try and get the game further south and get away from this northern stereotype I, my argument is that instead of trying to spread it like a bit of a virus where it catches on we should make it as good as it can be in the north all right and let them come to us let's let them be attracted to our, our product it's not good enough in the north there's too many clubs that uh, not got financial stability so how do we get that then Southerners attracted into the game and bring that revenue from down there? It's how we market the game. Um, you know, that was saying, that was saying earlier um, when we was having a coffee about, you know, we had a magic weekend at Manchester. It was fantastic, you know, what, what a fantastic experience, two day event. Um, and I think the marketing about it was come and see magic weekend. And they didn't tell me when it was, what day it was, what it was about, you know, I think we got we, we can improve our marketing, you know, and, and I'm not kick, kicking uh, Red Bull, that's far from it, because I think it's, there's a lot of good at Red Bull. You know, I think what we've done last year in the World Cup, I think we, we, we should all be very, very proud of, but I think, you know, some of that learning we should be putting into this season, not just Super League, you know, Championship, Championship One, and going back to the gra grassroots of rugby, I think that's, you know, the whole thing needs looking at. Do you honestly think that the marketing is the way forward? Because I think that was the idea behind the Stobart sponsorship. They didn't take money, but it was all the marketing because they were getting out on 220 trucks around the country and, and basically marketing rugby league. Yeah, I think there's the cash within the game to market the product how it should be marketed. You know, um, if you look at maybe darts, the way they have marketed their, their products over the last, what, five, six, seven years, you know, it's not that long ago. You know, I think was it now second watch sport on yeah. Sky. Um, you know, you see, I mean, that's what we need. We need, we need some passion around the game and we should be talking to these people and trying to get them involved. I think it's great how uh, darts have championed working class heroes because rugby league is a blue collar sport. It's the sport of the people. Mm -hmm. And I do think that we could probably look to build a, a wider entertainment package around the match day experience, around the game. Where do you see, Tony, the opportunities to grow the game? We've, we've been to the NRL and we've spent some great time over there. Thank you to the Roosters who made me very welcome. And a huge thank you to Bo Ryan who, who gave us a lot of ideas and pointers for this TV show and to develop this. Yeah. Um, but how do you see uh, the opportunity going for our game in the UK for Rugby League? Yeah, you've got to forget 80 minutes. It's not about 80 minutes. 
it's the hour, hour and a half, two hours before the game. It's the hour, two and hour, two hours after the game, and you've got to give the speckies um, some entertainment value. Um, and we got we got to widen it out. We got to make it bigger and better. You know, and, and I've seen that in the UK. You know, when I first fell in love with the game, I certainly saw that at Bradford giving it a good shot, uh, maybe ten years ago. But you know, the, we, we need to do that more. We need to be, you know, bigger and better and flamboyant with our ideas. I think. Leeds are a club, Jonesy, that are succeeding. They're, they're, they're thriving in, in a great heartland that is Leeds. Can, uh, can the Leeds structure like, be spread out across other teams or do you think it's unique to the city? It can be. We've always had a strong following in rugby league in, in Leeds. I think uh, Gary Everton is the, probably the mastermind behind that. He's a very clever bloke, and I think the business model that, that he's got has obviously worked. Anyway, I've always I've described him as um, one of the Medici's from the Medici Bank back in uh, Florence, you know, Lorenzo de Medici. That's how clever he is, and he? he uses all the the talents, you know the. The abilities, the attributes that the local community's got, whether you know whether that be somebody who's really good at dance, somebody who's really intelligent, like Ryan Hall, bit of a rain man. You know, he takes all these different attributes around around the city and brings them all to Edinley, and he displays it there all there. And instead of having a ground that's only uh, open one day a week. You know, on the game day, it's open seven days a week, and we've got weddings on, we've got meetings on, we've got all kinds of exhibitions. Our Leeds Rugby Foundation's got a children's day, and it's just uh, you know a seven day a week showcase for us, and that's, that's what you've got to do. That's what we're doing in essence, being here right now. We're trying to showcase the personalities in our great game, and that, that's all we can do really. But do you just think that that's down to the success on the field? Because obviously, if, if if there's no success on the field, it's a little bit difficult to sell. No, I don't think so. I mean, uh, I was probably one of the first fruits, really fortunate to come through with, like, say, Kev Sinfield and Danny McGuire's with Burroughs. Um, but, you know, Leeds have always been quite a big club and the success definitely helps. You know, you, you've got to... So the marketing is, is the biggest money owner ahead of me at the moment. Yeah, you've got to get it the right way around, but certainly you've got to get people into the game to um, be interested in it as well. Something I wanted to ask you, Tony, was um, the new competition, the, the structure, league structure next year. You're in favour of it because it gives teams like Halifax an opportunity to, to make Super League. Yeah, it's massive. You know, um, I think they got the licensing maybe slightly wrong, um, and I think what, when we go to the three, the, the two tiers, and then splits into three tiers, I think it gives clubs with the ambition an opportunity to grow their club. Um, it gives them, it gives them a chance. You know, and that's the one thing that I want. I just want a chance. Um, it kind of really frustrates me though, where other clubs are spending money that they potentially haven't got, which. If they don't succeed this year, or if they do succeed, that it's only going to impact on them next year. And um, that's certainly not our business model. Um, you know, we, we're going to get there the right way. So when we get there, or if when we get there, uh, at least we've got next year's distribution to spend as a, as a full. So, did you not think the franchise system before, when it was all about building, you've just said there straight away they're just going to go out and they're spending all the money wrong. So that's why the franchise system didn't work because they were badly run, badly run clubs, mm -hmm. and they ended up spending what they didn't have. I think, you know, if, if you look at the franchising system, um, have clubs gone bust while that process has been in place? I think the answer is yes. I don't know how many it is now, I think it may be three, maybe four. But if, if you look at what we're going to do now and split into the, the two 12s and then into the three eights, if you run the club correctly, then I see it as a step forward. If you don't run the correct, uh, club correctly, then you're always going to have that bad taste in your mouth, you know, and I'm sure that Red all don't want that bad taste in the mouth. I'm sure that they don't want to see clubs going out and spending the cash to get there. And then when they get there, they haven't got the cash to back up being in where they're meant to be. Um, you know, and I, I, sometimes I get, I get the impression and the vibes on the street that, that that's potentially happening and that's certainly not what we're doing. If you could make one change in the game, just one, what would it be? The RFL promoting to get more speckers in. More, more promotion. More promotion. The more people we can get watching the game, because you know, you know, I'm hooked. You know, this, this is a you know a great, uh, great game, great spectacle that you guys put on the pitch. You know, and it's a great day out for family. You know, I, I got into it as a family event, not just a, a business event. So, I think the more people we can get through the doors, the best. It's interesting to say that when we spoke to Marwan, he said at the Magic Weekend they went outside and it was a great festival atmosphere. Mm. It was really good. And uh, he said he, he struggled to find any new fans, two new fans, he, he just they were all original fans. How do we get people who's not been brought into the game, like hereditary, like, because your parents played it all? You know, how do we get that new group of people who've never seen a game of rugby league before? Well, the one thing we don't do is free. 
You know, if you give tickets away, people don't come. You know, I've got stats to back that up. You know, we, we went out and gave loads of tickets away, and I think the stats turn around and, you know, it just doesn't work. So free is not, free is not the option. What we've got to do is get out there, you know, I think you mentioned it, get out in the community, you know, expand on just rugby, expand on there's other things happening with the event. You know, one of the, one of the, the, the deals that we've done last year was we, we had a New York day. We, you know, we turned the game into a themed um, New York, and it was just a huge success, you know, huge success. You know, there's more of that. That's what we need to do. We need to get you know to get these people in. Well, thanks for that, Tony. Fantastic insight into the business of rugby league. Right now, don't go away. Join us after the break for more rugby MTV. Rugby AM is brought to you in association with Reactive Insurance for your home and life insurance needs. Premier Sports. Now we are joined by an absolute legend of a guest and it's not a rugby player but it's someone you will know very very well. He's star, a worldwide superstar in fact. You might know him as Neville Longbottom from Harry Potter. It's the marvellous Matt Lewis. Matty boy, lovely to see you. Lovely to see you. You've supported us from the very start. You remember those cold dark days? Coming down on a on a windy morning down to a, a dusty old studio in Leeds. I've been trying to forget, but yeah, they're still there. <laughs> we still they're still there. Right. We're going to start off. We've got plenty of time to talk. I'm going to ask you a couple of HP questions, not the sauce. We've got to touch on the Potter. You know, you know, everyone asks you. I you know. We're going to ask you a couple of questions, and that'll be it. I promise. Right? How was it feel? How was it actually growing up at Hogwarts Castle? Um, I don't know. It's a weird one because it was just in a studio in Watford. <laughs> Which is don't come a dream man. Sorry, mate. It's probably the most glamorous of locations. It's not exactly a hotbed of rugby league either down there. So it was. Um... <laughs> You're not seeing the Broncos, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's killing it. Oh yeah, they're doing right well out there. Um... <laughs> Sorry. He said a swell. Exactly. Um, no, obviously, you know, working down in Watford was um, was pretty tough. Just been away from home like five days a week, coming on weekends and stuff. Um, and sort of doing school and at the same time alongside it was a bit weird. Like one minute you're doing all this fun doing filming and that, but then you get pulled out to do like chemistry and history and stuff, which is a bit dull. But I think of worse things. But it's, it's a great, great going up on a film set. You met some friends for life there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, still see, still see a bunch of the guys. We um, get together whenever we can. You know, people are all over the world working on different, different projects. So it's kind of tough, but we all try and get together. We do a, cr a charity cricket match every year. Um, to raise money for one of the stuntmen who, who sadly was uh, paralysed on film six. So we get together and we all have a big charity cricket match. You have Dan Radcliffe, the, uh, the captain of Gryffindor team, and I've got Tom Felton, the captain of the Slytherin team. No way. Yeah, it's a really good day, yeah. That's cool. I think you're actually in full admiration here, aren't you? Because you're a massive Harry Potter fan. I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. When I went to <laughs> Centre Pass last, I took all the full seven films and I watched them one day at a time. And when it finished, I was nearly crying and it was like I was lost. <laughs> it was like a bereavement. And I've only ever been starstruck twice in my life. Uh, once when I played against Bobby Golding for some reason, I know it's just a natural reaction. And the other time when I met Matt Lewis at Edinley, he played a bit, he played a bit oh. of touch of plastic there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he turned yeah. up, he played for the Carlsberg team. That's right. Uh, I know Carlsberg don't know who teams, but if they did, you'd probably think it was the best team in the world. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and Matt did really well. Actually, they got knocked out in semi finals. Um, but, you know, I, I watched Matt see how good he was. I thought he had a few good spells, to be fair. Let's get a negative view. Oh, Let's sorry. get a negative view. Tuesday Torch, Matt Lewis used to come down with the foundation, Tuesday Torch. And to be honest, it's a good job as an activist. His touch and pass skills aren't the best. You've got to admit, you were never built to be a rugby player, were you? Not at all. I thought you were going to train him up, Keith. Did you get him in the gym? Well, that just shows my coaching ability. You've done weights with him before, haven't you? Weights? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've done weights with him before, haven't you? We have, yes. And he was starstruck himself. He came into the weights room. He's a big, he's a big not for me, not oh. a big person. Jason Davidson, our conditioner, said he'd get him trimmed up. Uh, he's not trimmed himself up, by the way, but he did a great job with Matt Lewis. But one thing though, I wouldn't join him with the naked weights. Naked weights? We've got a thing where you, everybody has naked weights in a rugby team. Even John, do you must have done it. You've got to do naked weights. <laughs> Just you, Keith, yeah? Nick, Nick Fozard, Sean Long, there's a rule. You've got to do six, I think it's six chins on the, dip, on the chin bar, naked. Right. So Matt, Matt Lewis, he wouldn't join in. 
But I, I took it back to Hogwarts with me. I was like, you, what, you never heard of Nicky Whip before? Everyone's got to do it. Everyone's got to do it. Hermione, have you ever heard of Nicky Whip? Get them off. We're all over it. Right, I've got to ask you, honest question, serious question, is magic real? Mate, well, you've got a TV show, haven't you? So... Oh! 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 This is our dream. <laughs> Don't kill my dream, man. Don't kill my dream. One nil. Anything's possible. I know. Well, I've, you see, I've been a massive supporter of you. Maybe you don't support us as much as we support you. <laughs> but I've been watching you on uh, number 42. Not 42. 4-2. Four <laughs> and how's it going? Yeah, yeah. Blue Sun 4-2 um, on BBC. It's gone really, really well. The, uh, the series went down um, really great with the critics and, and the fans and stuff. We uh, got the biggest viewing figures for, for that slot. Um, so we got a commission on the second series like, straight away. Um, so we're off back out to South Africa in October for two months to, to do the new series. Been, been with the producers and the writers in the last sort of few months working out what, what Tower Block's going to be doing next. So that, you, you play a character called Tower Block? Yeah. Have you ever lived in a Tower Block? Uh, wow. I haven't, no. Um, he's a, he's a, a working class lad from Armley. So it's not a million miles away from my, where I am, but no, I've never, I've never lived in a tower block, so I've had sort of, you know, a bit of, bit of research into the character and stuff, but I just, like, I love him, I think he's great, he's a big, the thing was, he was supposed to be a Geordie, the reason he was, he was supposed to be like a six foot five Geordie when they first did it, and I went in for the meeting, and I was like, you don't want to hear my Geordie accent, so I'm just going to do it in my natural. There was a bit of Geordie not accent. A no, come on, please. You're an actor. There was a little bit of Geordie accent. The best I could do is like some off Geordie show, but I don't think you'll be able to put it on TV. <laughs> well, Wagger has got to do accents for us, and he's struggling a little bit, aren't you, kid? Yeah, I need a bit of practice. Will, will you give Wagger a bit of coaching off screen, off set today, on, on how to do accents? On a Geordie accent. He's got to listen on, to it. On any accents. It's the simplest thing. I mean, because it's, it's not easy. I mean, the only way that I do it is that you've just got to listen to it again and again, watch as much TV and listen to as much as much recordings as possible and do it all the time. So, for example, if I'm going for a meeting where I have to do an American accent... Do it, do it. I'll just do it. Oh, no, no Come on, please. Just do one accent. Your best one. What do you want me to say? Anything. Say, welcome to Rugby AM in another voice. Look at Rugby AM in like a yank voice. Jeez. Uh, welcome to Rugby AM. Yeah. Yeah! yeah. yeah. He's an accent. He's an accent. <laughs> right there. Right, you're massively dry nose fan. I am, yeah. Do you want the big unveiling? Oh, oh there she oh, is. Yeah. Wow. Look at that. Yeah. Do you wear that under every outfit yeah. you ever wear? Just in case I get asked <laughs> if I'm a big dry nose fan and I can, I can get it out. Yeah. Jonesy, why has he got your kid's top on? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a large boy, isn't it? It could be Kevin Sheffield's <laughs> shirt. Is it Kevin Sheffield's oh, shirt? Oh, if only. <laughs> is it, oh, is he your favourite player, is he? Well, obviously, not. He pales in comparison next to. Next to you. I'm missing you at the minute, aren't Most we? people look pale outside of me. You like number 11, what's crack with that? That's my number, isn't it? Um, yeah, it is, yeah. And it's all because it's of you, Jonesy, growing up, you know, watching you play. No, it's not, sorry, mate. It's, uh, <laughs> no, I just, um, I don't know, it's a weird one. I just always I used to get picked for it when I played for school, where I played footy at school. And then um, from that, it just extended into all sports. So whenever I play, like, I play footy or, or cricket or anything I was with. You always got number 11 at soccer? Yeah. Were it five a side? Hey. <laughs> that was good. Uh, giving it, we want him to support us, John. I'm really sure. <laughs> <We're back laughs> sure I need you all to be nice for him, actually, because my claim to fame is that he could actually get me the sack. He's actually, in theory, my boss. What, you're his boss? I'm I was trusted. Trust so you are my boss. Uh, VP? VP of the foundation. So yeah. You all need to be nice to him, otherwise I'm gone. Well, well you need to be nice to him. Apparently, <laughs> the, 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 the word on the street in the Rugby AM cast room, to say thank you for coming on, on the show tonight, Jones is going to donate one of his old playing shirts to you. <laughs> Mate, it'd be my honour. Absolutely. See, in all seriousness, this is not... Whatever you want. But he's got not really it. been used this season, but, but he has got it. That's the only yeah, one yeah, yeah. Left. You can't trade it for a Kev shirt. You I'll can't get trade you a Kevin for a Kev Sinfield shirt. one. Yeah, Absolutely. most people want Kevin Sinfield to sign my gear to him. <laughs> <laughs> so you can have that if you want. Thanks, Paul. What do you reckon this year, Matt, is, is, you know, Leeds look the real deal this season. Can, can you see them... Winning Super League this year, is it going back to Head and Lee, the Super League title? Oh, I mean, you can, you can say that every season, can't you? I mean, even when we're down in fifth, sixth, you can say we can win it. Of course we can. Um, you know, Jones is going to attest to that. Right? But um, this year we have, we've looked absolutely class. Um, you know, defensively, we've looked amazing. We've had a bit of a dip in form for the last couple of weeks, but, you know, that's, that's, that's bound to happen. Jones is not playing. Exactly. We could do with this lad back here. Um, but no, I think, I think it is just that. It's a dip in form. I think we'll have a good game against Lee. And I think that'll um, that'll really you know give a little boost to the confidence and maybe maybe if we play some young lads as well because um, that's that's where we, we struggle sometimes when we get a few injuries in that 
because um, we've had you know such a such a consistent team for so many years. Um, when we do get some injuries, it, it, it kind of rocks us a bit. But you know, we've, these young lads are starting to get more game time now, and I think I think um, that we'll, we'll come through and we'll, we'll come out of this dip. No, no bother. We've got the class for that, and I think we'll come out the other side. Part of the show, we've got all sorts of stuff planned, mad sketches, different guests, and we all know kids say the funniest things. Kids are great. We've all got kids on the panel. Apart from our uh, guests. You got your kids, Matt? You, you got your kids Not yet? Not that I know of. Not that I know of. Great answer, kid. You're, you're all over the world. You're a baller. You're a VIP. You're a VIP. Hollywood style. You could have about three or four over there, by the sounds of things. A magic wand. Hey. 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 It's not the size, it's the magic it performs, kid. Don't forget that. Well, yeah, any kids on the horizon? You're newly married. I was married life treating you. Awesome, Timo. Awesome. Should have done it earlier, mate. Has it, has it changed much? Uh, no. No, I'm still... Uh, Under still, the thumb. Yeah, still under the thumb, uh, <laughs> doing what I do. Um, but yeah, having a good time. You had a great stag do as well. Yeah, Tyler, my good mate. I, I can't, can't tell the stories much. on here, but no. can't say too much. But um, <laughs> I think my dad and my uncle Paul had a good time anyway. It, it, is there plans for little waggers? <laughs> <laughs> is there plans for little waggers yet? Any plans for uh, little yeah, waggers? Well, there'll be plans, mate, yeah. Little there'll be plans. I'll, uh, I'll have to do my bit, won't I? And uh, put some work in and... Uh, see what happens, see if I can get a little wagger. <laughs> you know, Loz, Loz, your little Lincoln is, is a beaut. He is. And, you know, can we announce on it? You're expecting number two. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Where the world. Another be, Chev Walker on the way. It God help us. Three baby boy walkers. Three? Yeah, big walker. Mini Walker, Mini Mini Walker. Well, I'm already below the dog in our pecking order in our household, so if we have another boy, I don't even know where I'll stand. You're right. Are you hoping for a boy or a girl? Uh, I think it'd be nice for a girl for me, but then a female chef. Um, but then it'd be nice for a boy for Lincoln, because there's only going to be two years between them, so... Well, if anyone knows, I've got a little boy called Theo. I've got one child, um, he's eight-year-old. Jonesy tried to kill him the other day. <laughs> so I just thought, we, you know, we're getting out of the open. It's been, it's been praying on my mind, Jonesy. Would you like to apologise now live on TV? Yeah, we took uh, Theo and my two oldest boys, Laura and Dax, out on the field, a bit of motorbiking, PW80, PW50, designed for kids, never had been on it before, and Simo put Theo on it and pointed him towards my van and says, <laughs> off you go, and Theo accelerated, boom, in the side of my van, and my van's all right, stay. Theo, Simo, thank you. Well, you've got four boys, and you know what I love about you more than anything? The names you gave your children. They are good names. Yeah. Good names. Talk us through the names for your kids. <laughs> four uh, boys, four boys. Four boys. All this one's called Law. Um, when I met my wife, uh, when we were back in uh, school, we uh, obviously we didn't get married back in school, but uh, we always said that we wanted uh, our first child to be called Law. I think I got it from a computer game, uh, Tekken or something like that. And then a bit later on, uh, she, I'll be a Star Trek fan, you know, sci fi and magic and all that carry on. So we've got Dax from there. Uh, Kurgan, I, I saw that uh, Tom Hardy was one of my favourite. Have you ever met Tom? Tom Hardy? No. One of my favourite actors, really good characters in some of the films I plays. And uh, I once said to my wife, he'd make a good Kurgan from film Highlander. And she went, I like that film. And I said, uh, I like that film and I like that name. And I said, do you know what Kurgan means? It means it's a Russian burial ground. That's what it means. It's like, a, it's like um, where they bury soldiers back in uh, medieval days. And then, uh, funnily enough, Tom Hardy played uh, Ben in the Batman film. And he was just Bane. the most masculine. Um, character I've, I've ever seen, and I said Ben's a right name. And to be fair, my littlest lad is like a piece of lead, so he, he makes a good Ben. Well, let's see how you get on. Um, this is Jonesy and Kermo filling in for Keith, Stanley Little League. Right, boys, what do you like about rugby league? Why is it better than other sports? Because you get to smash people. <laughs> Whose dad shouts at them if they've had a bad game on a weekend? He says you should have tried harder. I remember you once telling me that your dad said he treats you like a slave. What does he do? <laughs> <laughs> if it's me take iron enough every day. Right, does anybody's dad do anything embarrassing? Oh, yeah. My dad dances on the pit like a little lady. <laughs> right then, who plays other sports? Boxing. Wow, do you enjoy boxing? Nope. No. All right. <laughs> I think we should talk about this. Who makes you go boxing? My dad. Who's your dad? Alex Simmons. Alex Simmons. Ooh. <laughs> if last year, the last game, um, we played against Townsville Tigers, 
and uh, it was really dirty and everyone was punching and I punched someone in the stomach. Anybody would like to tell me which is the best rugby league club in the world? Rhinos. The Rhinos. Why do you think Rhinos are the best team in the world? Because they've got some of the best players in the world. Well, who's your favourite player? No, you. Oh, that's very nice. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's your second? Who's your, who's your second favourite player? Hardacre. Hardacre. Ooh. Hi, I'm Wagger. I'm in the sheds with Chew Dog and Tyre. Um, just going to talk to you about a bit about the fans. Uh, the fans are the most important thing uh, to all the clubs, um, especially myself when I've had more clubs than Tiger Woods. They mean that much to us. At the end of the day, they pay our wages. They're that passionate about the game like myself. Um, and we've, I've sent these two out to get to know the fans, what happens game day, different various stuff like that throughout the programme. Um, I want to speak to Chew Dog and Tyre a bit about your experiences going into the clubs and meeting all the new fans. Yeah, I mean, we've had a great time doing it. As you say, we are big fans of the game, so we've gone to a, a few Super League clubs just to sample how things go with the fans. We've uh, tested out the pies and the pints. We've uh, sampled the atmosphere, yep. done a few sketches of people. We've been sponsored by uh, Red Shoe Barbecue as well, so thanks to them for uh, helping us out with what we've been doing. Yeah, we've really got immersed in, uh, in what it means to be a fan of all these different clubs. So we've got right in with the, the hardcore fans. We've donned the shirts of their clubs for the day. Met a lot of players out there, we've had a lot of fun, uh, as you'll see shortly. Right, so we're here at Providence Stadium, Odsall. As you can hear behind us, the 19s of Bradford and Wakefield are slogging it out, just as the senior squads of Bradford Bulls and Wakefield Wildcats will be in just over an hour in what's arguably going to be the biggest relegation scrap Bradford have ever been involved in. Tyre? Yeah, indeed, I think you just about covered it. Both teams will be desperate for the points. The fans are going to be vocal. It's going to be busy today, Odsall. We're looking forward to another exciting game of rugby league. Uh, Chew Dog? I'm just asking, you've been busy this week, haven't you? Who have you been hanging around with this week? Because you've told me you've got a trick for me. I have, Tyre. This week, I have been hanging around with friend of the show and superstar magician, Matt Lewis, a.k.a. Neville Longbottom from Harry Potter, and he's taught me a special trick. As long as it doesn't involve me seeing your wand, you can show me your trick. <laughs> as much as you'd love to, Tyre, no. This trick he's, he's taught me, he came up with it specifically for today. Now he's taught me, especially, I've, I've got to say it in a certain way, but this, this trick will turn you into a Bradford fan. Are you ready? I'm ready. Wingardium Bradford Osa! Oh, um, that went a, a bit, right, just, just let, me, right, let me try again. I might have just said it wrong. Sorry, mate. Wingardium Bradford Osa! Ah, that's better. Sorry about that, mate. Right, so now we're uh, now we're all in gear. Let's go find some fans. Right, we're here now. It's time to find the fans, get their thoughts on things at the Bradford Bulls. What's your name, sir? It's Bob. Hi, Bob. Right, a few questions for you, Bob. Who's your favourite Bradford Bulls player this year? Um, well, I think this year for me it's Chev Walker. Just the th the things that he's been asked to do and he's, he's done them and played with a lot of heart, uh, particularly that position. So I'd have to say Chev. If you could smash any player in Super League, who would it be? Earl Crabtree. Why, now, now that didn't take you long to answer. Why Earl Crabtree? I can't say a bad thing about him, other than I don't like the look of him at all. Would you like to pull his hair? I'd like to slap his face a few <laughs> times, certainly. <laughs> So, great game today, good win for the Bradford Bulls. What do you think of today's game? And uh, who was your favourite player today? Who, who was the best player? Who stood out for you on the pitch today? So, uh, vital two points for uh, Bradford. Do you think they've got it with what it takes to stay at the bottom two now for the rest of the season? OK, and finally, what are your predictions for next week's game against Warrington Wolves? 
Right, so we've witnessed a fantastic game of rugby league down here at the Providence Stadium, also. Final score, Bradford Bulls 20, Wakefield Wildcats 12. Great, great, great game. For me, my man of the match would have to go to Bradford Bulls number three, Adrian Patel. Completely ran the first half. Vital try in the first half that set Bradford Bulls up for a massive win. What about you, Tyre? Yeah, well, I thought uh, Patel had a good game as well, uh, as long, uh, along with uh, Matt Diskin. He ran the show in the first half and did well in the second half before he went off. And uh, the man of the match for me, though, I'm going to pick uh, Man Manasseh. Man 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 yeah, it's Manasseh, Manuga 4. Thanks to everyone at the Bradford Bulls for looking after us, taking care of us today. Thanks to you all, and we hope to see you all next time on Tyre and Chew Dogs Road Trip. Uh, fantastic trip away there, Chew Dog and Tyre on tour, out there in amongst the fans. Right now, join us again for part two, or we're back in the studio with Dave Campbell, Mick Morgan, the cast speak! <laughs>
what was right for that incident and what was right for the game. So I'll give him the yellow card. Totally agree. The passion that you bring in there, Mick, is what, is what makes the clip. You absolutely love it. Has the game changed? Do we miss a little bit of that these days? Well, probably so. But uh, if you've got to remember, I, I'm a fan who's commentating on game. So uh, the passion comes from within. And, uh, and obviously, uh, it will foul play and uh, you want him to get sent off because obviously, uh, we're cast and there, Wigan. But I've done what David's got to say. But at the end of the day, it would have backed foul and to me, he should have walked, but he didn't. But that's how it goes. But yeah, that's how the game won in them days. And uh, not as many cameras about or whatever, but there were plenty of beef and bash. What would it like to referee Kelvin Skerritt? Kelvin, Kelvin was awesome. He's, he, had a, he had a great reputation. Uh, there was other players around that same era, Kev, uh, Kelvin, Cal Harrison. They were all tough men and it was great. It was great. You had to work with them. Uh, you'd think about them before the game. Uh, and that's not to say you prejudged them, but I was aware of them. Kelvin goes into an upright tackle, I'm, his ne I'm the next to him. Kelvin, he's down, he's finished, leave him. So I'm close to him, so I've got him all the time. Not just Kelvin, Carl, any of, the, any of the, the big guys, I was aware of them. Steve Ganson said to me a few months yeah. ago that when he started the game, uh, he used to be, uh, have a bit of banter with the players and mm. get that empathy, that rapport, but nowadays they're all mic'd up, so they can't have it. Is that something that uh, referees really enjoyed with players? Referees really enjoyed that rapport with the players. I certainly had that rapport. Uh, I believe that I could talk the language that the players understood you know I wasn't finger wagging never finger wagging always open hands non-threatening gestures talk to them in a language that the guys understand and they always responded well I really enjoyed my time in the middle and Mick do you think players could get away with a bit more back then a bit cheeky yeah they did uh, obviously uh, there were no not cameras everywhere camera angles or whatever and uh, it was brutal and uh, yeah they did get a lot away with, with a lot more in them days but I think uh, to be fair I think people went along to see that as well I've seen a lot in, in Super League this year where there's, there's been a scrap and there have been punches thrown. To me, they talk about that in pub after. That's what they've paid the money to go see. And to me, as long as nobody's injured, that get on with it and there's no wrong with that. <laughs> but, <laughs> you, you bring back the beef, mate. Yeah, bring back the oh, beef, like, get on, lad. This is not beef. This is not beef. But if I can mention about the banter, if yeah. you don't mind, I can not banter. Uh, and you mentioned Bobby Golden already a couple of times tonight. Uh, I refereed Bobby when he was a 17-year-old uh, playing for Wigan in the Lancashire Cup at Central Park, they're playing Barra. It's a beautiful Sunday afternoon, uh, and they're playing Barra, as I say. Uh, the first scrum went down, and Bobby had the ball. Now, you've got to remember, guys, that this was in the days when the ball was supposed to go in the middle. We were, the first scrum went down, and Bobby walked up to that scrum, very confidently, very cockily, I should say, and as he got to the scrum, he put it straight into his second one. Psh, penalty. <laughs> Bobby looked at me, I looked at Bobby, and he gave the penalty. Five minutes later, second scrum went down towards Wigan. Bobby walked up to the scrum, Cocky again, walked up to the scrum, straight into the second row. Penalised him again. Bobby feeding. He looked at me and I looked at him and I said, Come here, Bobby. I said, Listen, I said, if you want to win that ball at the scrum, you've got to make it look like it's going in the middle. I said, What are you doing, Bob? I said, You want that ball in two hands? I said, You walk up to the scrum and you look at your hooker. His hooker that day was Martin Dermott. You look at Martin, he said, and You nod. He knows that ball's coming in. So you walk up to that scrum, he nods, he puts his foot out, you put the ball behind his foot, you've got the ball. Bobby nodded, I nodded. Five minutes later, the third scrum went down. Wigan Eden ball. Bobby's got the ball in two hands. He walks up to the scrum, he nods to Martin Dermott, he, put, he puts his foot out, he puts the ball behind his foot and I go, Psh! but not when I'm refereeing, Bobby. <laughs> 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 Funny you should bring that up. I can tell how close you are to players uh, in this next few uh, seconds here. Now, referees these days have got a move call uh, yeah. to let the, the rook know that it's time to move yeah, and start yeah. getting back on side. Uh, back in your day, it was a little bit more tactile and there's a, a couple of little touches on bum here. For, for us, want to carry on playing it here. Yeah. <laughs> diabolical. <laughs> Middleton in fails. Keep your eye on that, uh, Dave here. Oh, there's a little one. Come on, Cass, rub it in! <laughs> Samson. Shugs one off. Shugs another, still going. Hey! <laughs> There's another little one. So yeah. back in that day, what's going on there? Why is there a little touch on bum? Well, what you just got to remember is two minutes ago, there was, there was a bit of foul play. Yeah. So what I wanted to do was make sure I was close to the play, make sure it didn't happen again. So, so the players know I'm around. But what I'm doing there, I'm encouraging them. God, leave him, he's down, he's tackled, leave him, I don't wait. And it worked. It certainly worked for me in that, in that era. Yeah, it certainly did. Mick, just looking, you've rubbed shoulders a lot, I'm sure, since. 
Do you ever feel bad about what you said when you look back at the clip? <laughs> no, not one bit. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm a cash ladder. Well, I'm a. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm a cast lad, and that's that's says it is, and exactly that's what it is. I can't speak. I can't, I can't, I can't speak. That's how it is, and that's how I said it. And uh, it's, it's obviously it's done rounds now. But well, you, you might, I might just add that Mickey's word is true colours, isn't he? Yeah, Mickey's word is true you know colours. I, mean? I had to look at that on his heart. I had to make a decision that was objective that day. I had to see it down the line and call it the shot as, as I saw it. Mick, passionate man that he is, saw it one way. I saw it down the middle. Mickey, what you've been at Cass a long, long time, player, commentator, and that match day host. Um, <laughs> is, is the game different like, since you played the game to this, then, then to the modern era? Oh, yeah. Obviously, uh, it, it was more brutal back then. Um, so you were a man of steel? Yeah, yeah, back in the day. Man yeah. of steel, everybody. Yeah. Right here, man of steel. <laughs> but the biggest, the biggest uh, rule change, uh, that's made it a lot quicker and everything. It's, it's ten yards. That, that's the biggest change that I see in the game. I still love watching game and commentating on game. I'm not like one of these old players who's who's done his bit and then took his ball home. I go I go down every week, never miss, and I enjoy it. And, and a ten yard rule has changed the game completely. And that's your biggest change. But as I say, as far as the Biff match, we've still got the like it. Like we've got Carney at uh, Cass Beach Ball. He put, he, he don't take the prisoners. <laughs> like he takes the prisoners. And, but at the end of the day. I'll go back into the 60s when, when, when with class uh, wingmen who, who lit up the game, like uh, Tom Van Vollenhoven and, and uh, Billy Bosson. Now, Tom Van Vollenhoven were full of speed and grace. Billy Bosson were gung-ho style. Yeah. And that's what, that's what Speckies love. Yeah. And Carney's like that. That's, that's what they love. And there's nothing wrong with that. Get stuck in and have a go. And I, I, I think it's great. I love it. You had some great nicknames for players. I've watched loads of your commentaries on, uh, on YouTube. Uh, can you give us some other examples of nicknames, you nickname players, Morgie nicknames? Well, there's nicknames, quite a few actually. I mean, I just think at the top of head, uh, Gaylord, obviously Richard Gay, for, <laughs> uh, for obvious reasons. And then we've got, uh, for obvious reasons again, uh, Steve Snitch, he was super grass. Uh, <laughs> uh, Ryan Boyle, Lance, another one obviously. And um, obviously we had uh, Michael Ford, who were uh, ubiquitous, omnipresent. And obviously, steam pig, near yeah, Cruxy. Uh, giving it the old, I can't speak, I think, as phrases go, it's almost up there with poor lad. Well, it's right up there, I think it'll be long, <laughs> remembered for a long time. Yeah, Jamie, yeah, it's, uh, I can't speak, it's just, I don't know how it come about originally, but obviously, you, you get frustrated when referees make wrong decisions, and say, I can't speak, and, uh, and uh, obviously, we have a laugh about it, but it's something that's stuck over years, and, and people, I've, I'll be walking through a cast, and I'm thinking, oh, I'm going on a run, and people are in the window, I can't speak, and I think so. <laughs> It's a bit of banter, but there you go. Thanks, thanks very much for that, Mick. Uh, please make some noise for our guests today and bring back the bit. Thanks, Mick. All right. Well, what's happening? What's happening there? Hello, Kyle Amore here. I love jam sandwiches. I'm the strongest man in Super League. I'm on six figures at St. Helens. Kids out there, if you want to be as strong as me, eat your jam sandwiches, matter. Hi, guys. Jamie Foster here. Part-time rugby player, full-time model. Sort. Over the years, I've had trouble taking selfies. But now, thanks to Mobile Bits, we've got a selfie remote. Alright, I'm Dan Sargentson, the Sarge from London. London, London, London. I'm loving the life of the Wigan Warriors with Wayne, the governor, and China's my busy. We watch EastEnders every night. When we kicked off against Leeds, I said, Oi! They said, what? I said, bang! I'm the Sedge! London, London! I'm Jimmy George Buchanan from the Leeds Rhinos. I live in Bromley, the Big Apple. <laughs> I've come on to Rugby AM to tell you about the Beer Club. There's loads of players within Super League who want to join the beer club. We've got Craig Gilby, we've got Danny Kermon, we've got myself. Everyone's trying to join this beer club. First rule about beer club, don't talk about beer club. <laughs>
Callum Ward here. I'm back, Maddis. Top of the morning to ya. I've just been picked for England. I love England. Super England. Super strong. Kyla Moore. Just to show I'm still Irish. I've dyed my hair, dyed my beard. Kyla Moore. Jam sandwiches. And I love me guineas. Rugby AM is brought to you in association with Reactive Insurance for your home and life insurance needs. So I'd like to welcome Matt Lewis and Tony Abbott back to the panel. We're going to do our Rugby AM quiz now. Tony, you my boy. Put it there. Nice. <laughs> right, it's a quick fire quiz. Five questions per team. Jonesy and Matt, the Leeds team, versus uh, the oldies, <laughs> the Tony. The gentleman, Ooh. the gentleman. Championship gentleman, that is. Right, I'm going to ask the questions to Jonesy and Matt. Are you ready? If you get them wrong, we're going to go out to the audience. Right. Number one. I'm keeping score, by the way, and I'm honest as the day is long. <laughs> Never forget that. Honest, Simo. Who won the very first Man of Steel? <laughs> I'll take it by that. You don't know who it was. Do you want to hazard a guess? It might be a good actor anyway, I actually know. Um, <laughs> Do we get a bonus point? I'll, I'll tell you what, what you, you know his son. I'll give you I'll give Ooh. you. You know his son. I wouldn't be involved either. <laughs> anybody out there? Anybody out there? David Ward. David Ward. Morgan. Points to Monster. Morgan in the place. Who has won the most Super League titles? Next. It's you. It's you two together. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it you're saying Leeds. Leeds Reynolds. And how many? For an extra Six. bonus point. Yeah. <laughs> right, give you an extra bonus point for that. Correct answer, make some noise. <laughs> Who scored the first try in the last year in last year's Challenge Cup? The first try in last year's Challenge Cup. You've got two points out of a possible three so far. You're doing all right. Josh Charmley. Uh, uh, anybody? Anybody? Ian Farnley. <laughs> Cheat you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Ian Farnley. <laughs> Two points out of four. In what year was the RFL founded? Uh, 1895. The to to Thank you, God, for that one. I'll give you a point for that. You're very in touch there, Jonesy. What's that? Is that a four? Is that a five? Four? Four. Four out of six, right. Six. Who won the League Leaders' Shield in 2010? I love this game. I love quizzes. Have you got an answer? Oh, yeah, yeah. Was it Warrington? Uh, uh, anybody? 2010, League of Leaders. What did you say, Matt? Tyre Wigan, point for you, son. And that is your lot, boys. Sorry, Matt. You've right. floundered. Matt got it right as well. Four points out of seven. Always listen to the magic man. Do you not know anything, Jonesy? We had divine intervention. Listen to God, listen to magic. <laughs> right, Loza, you're up now with the cheaters. How did they get it? I thought they only had five questions. Yeah, but I made it up as well. There's a bonus point, but you've got a bonus point as well. Don't worry. 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 Uh, Danny Houghton. Correct. One nil. Mm. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not convinced he's not cheating. <laughs> <laughs> Who won the 2002 Challenge Cup final? So did Blank Look. Them cogs are wearing very slowly in his mind. Bradford. All concussions at rugby. Bradford. Bradford? Afraid not. <laughs> oh, anybody out there? 2002? Jason Wiggy. Wigan. You can only have one. There, there we go. Mm. Wigan. Campbell. Two Wigan. Campbell, you legend. Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> Who won the Super League Grand Final in 1999? 1999. 
Correct. Four. Then Helen. Beefy. Two on the key. Two out of three. Four on the ball. Who scored the first try in last year's grand final? Um, oh. You were there. How are you? You were there. <laughs> <laughs> you scored it. We know I don't watch rugby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> we can't have help from the, from the audience here. <laughs> to be fair, they did get divine intervention. Maybe we should yeah, give. Yes, yes, yes. You have a clue. You have a clue. Go on. Make the clue. Michael Monaghan. No. Oh. <laughs> okay. Shouldn't have two brothers last... playing in the same team. This is your last one, Four. and there's a bonus um, point on here as well. So, who won the Northern Rail Cup in 2012? <laughs> Northern Rail Cup 2012. That was definitely Halifax. Yes. yes. <laughs> For an extra bonus point, what was the score? It, it was, was against Featherstone, by the way. I remember you saying wrecked. this was the best day of your life. It was the best day of my life. <laughs> best day of your life. <laughs> you were wrecked. I remember the story. I've got you, I got your winning medal framed recently. I do, yeah. It's all there framed and the score is on it. What was the score? Come on. I've no idea. <laughs> <laughs> we won. At least have a guess. It's an extra bonus point. 1220. Oh, 1221. Oh. Oh. The winners of the quiz tonight were... Tilly! Yeah! <laughs> By one point, by the one point. I mess that up with it. The one hand, you try. The hand, I mess it God up. God loves a try it, never forget that. <laughs> As we know, the lads in rugby league are absolute superb banter. Great blokes on and off the field. So we've decided to go out to see all the clubs and get two characters from each club to dish the dirt on their fellow teammates. First up, St. Ellen's. Our very good friends, Kyle Moore and Alex Wormsley. Check this out. It's the little things, the simple things about you. It's the little things about you. We can't shave, we can't swear, can we? Hardest trainer, who's that? Yeah, Johnny, Johnny Lomax. Oh yeah, definitely, yeah, he's a, weirdo. yeah, an absolute weirdo and he's got a body, body like a Greek god. Josh Jones, and yeah, he's just lazy and he? he's, uh, he's got really bad vigour as well. Yeah, yeah. So is Greg, Greg's got bad vigour. Greg's really fat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, most, I'd probably say, uh, probably say Luke Walsh, yeah. Yeah, Luke Walsh or all answer higher definitely. They've got well, from NFL experience, aren't they? Really, they've uh, picked up some really good skills. I'm sick of him pulling my pants down in training. Not literally pulling my pants down, but just showing me up in training all the time, isn't he? Showing us big fellas up, isn't he? I'm just sick of him pulling my pants down. You know, literally. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who's the strongest? You. Yeah, I, we were doing a chest session this morning, weren't we? And uh, I showed you up there, didn't I? Well, yeah, but only because I did more reps. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, um, Louis. Louis good. He's always pulling pranks. He, um, yeah, who else? Not everyone's really boring, aren't they, really? Um, well, I ain't really done one. Um, a good one. Oh, Louis done. Um, last year, Tommy making since wheels got taken off his uh, brand new Scirocco, which were quite good. I'm not sure if it was Louis, but he had a part in it somewhere along the lines. Um, yeah, I'm just general Tom fool of it, really. Yep. I mean, the only the, the, the only prank I've seen him is always every time it's his rounding Costa, he always he always seems to say it's mine. <laughs> Marv, Wh who who is Marv? Who is Marv? Shout out for Marv Flanagan, the um, the best Twitter page on Twitter. It's so funny because Mark Flanagan is actually boring, though, so it's true. Yeah, so if there's a question about who's a boring, we already know it's, it's Mark Flanagan. And yeah. That's why he's got a boring page. Yeah. He's boring. <laughs> Mark Flanagan. <laughs> Dog's body, well, it's got to be young Greg Richards, hasn't it? Eh? He's, uh, he's, uh, yeah, he's got a ter terrible rig, hasn't he? Yeah, it's been pulled a couple of times on his, on his diet, especially. I know he... Um, I think he had a pizza once and I think he had a KFC for dessert as well. 
You actually live with him, don't you, Greg? And is it true you went upstairs and found him asleep with a load of uh, load of pastry flakes all over his chest? <laughs> yeah. Coach's favourite. Uh, yeah, he has a top three. Uh, he has a top three, and it's just a little joke that we have that people get promoted and relegated. Uh, he, it depends who it depends how, how good of a game someone has and who gets it, who gets the toffees that week. But I'm trying to think. Louis was up there recently, wasn't he? Louis was up in his top three, and who else? Um, Buff's always in it. He's, he's always up there. as Buffer. Uh, Everything's always Buff's fault. Yeah, John Wilkin was in it until he, um, he knocked on from kickoff at Cass, but let's not talk about knocking on from kickoff, sir. <laughs> He's that tight, he hadn't had an haircut for six months. He hadn't had a shave for nine months. You know, he's, he's bothered that t-shirt, he's bothered his jeans. He hadn't bought a coffee for six months. <laughs> and he's, uh, he's on the most money as well. Two share. Absolute classic teammates. First of the series, amazing. Danny Kermon, how funny is Mara, Kyle Moore? Yeah, friend of the show, Kyle. Um, he's probably one of the funniest guys I've had the pleasure of playing with. Uh, definitely miss him around, around the place at Wakefield. And, you know, some of his stories he, from when he uh, was a warehouse man before he came to play rugby league, he's just got some classics. Not everyone that you can share on the show, though. <laughs> you've, got some, you've got some great lads over at Saints, so obviously Alex Wormsley as well, good friend of the show. Now, what I've noticed with Mara and yourself and Jonesy, what is it, guys, with, with beards in rugby league? Well, Alex, you know, uh, the man doesn't grow the beard, the beard grows the man. So, you know, <laughs> Very profound, it's that Daniel. simple, mate. I don't agree with that. I didn't like my beard either, but it grew on me. <laughs> 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 why, why are you still waiting to grow a yeah, beard? Yeah, I'm still waiting, mate. I'm struggling, baby face. Can I just take a girl's face. point of view? I'm not loving the beards. You're not loving the beard, no. lads? Whoa! Thank you, Lauren. Thank don't you. tell, don't no. tell Chev. He loves a beard, does Chev? Yeah, but I don't let him grow one very often. I love that. You don't Ooh. let him grow. No, I don't. Oh. You heard that, Chev? You don't <laughs> grow that beard. You don't <laughs> grow that beard. You'll notice he doesn't have one. Oh. Kim was here every month. Uh, you've been looking around. You are now our social media guru. I'm going to call you that. I'm going to throw it out there. You're a guru. I'm no stranger to social media. I like a bit of Twitter, a bit of Instagram, and of course, most people have probably seen the Snapchat, uh, <laughs> unfortunately. So yeah, I've, I've been having a good look around this month and uh, we've got some beauties for you. Looking in uh, the lives of rugby players, you know, things to get up to outside rugby, and also a, a bit of banter as well. You've got some, obviously, that's out in the public, public domain, but you've also got a few secrets just for the show. Is that right? Well, yeah, I put it out there that I'm coming on the show and uh, a couple of people have sent me some secret videos uh, via WhatsApp. So, yeah, not in the public domain yet, but we're going to share them with you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> now you'll get to see them. <laughs> oh, what can we say about this guy, Simo? Uh, friend of the show, oh, well, Mr Ashley Gibson. Massive, he's a massive sort. If anyone doesn't know Gibbo, he's a massive sort. He's a, he's a male model. Yeah, he's, uh, he had a good uh, couple of days, Gibbo. We put about six or seven on in uh, the two days, all with a top off. And he's even brought up his own hashtag, put a shirt on Gibbo. So we can see hashtag how much Gibbo loves getting oh, his top off. Yeah, everyone dressed, everyone dressed from Gibbo. apart from Gibbo. Well, yeah. Jamie Ellis has kept his shirt on. Yeah, um, <laughs> thankfully. <laughs> oh, they've oh. all got him out there. But yeah, as you can see, Gibbo again. No top on. Oh, oh wow. There it is, please. The model shot. Oh, Look at him, ladies. Look at Mr. Gibson. Ashley. I'm starting a new hashtag, don't put the shirt back on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this then? Who's this? Oh, we're moving on now, yeah. Um, I've never really heard anyone use this word, Alex Bay. I've never, I've never heard it. I know he's got the worst airline in Super League. Yeah, it is a bad airline. A there, bad there's one. a few bad ones knocking out there. Uh, so, Luke Gale saying, if you if you call anyone Bay, you need to give yourself an uppercut. And I quite like this, give yourself an uppercut. Is that Alex. your new saying? Yeah, so that's going to be my saying. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that once a month. I'm going to give out the give yourself an uppercut award. Hashtag, give yourself an uppercut. Oh, oh, and how go. could you have a selfie off without having Jamie Foster in there? No. He loves it, doesn't he? What do you reckon to Jamie Foster, Wag? One a day, innit? One a day yeah. with Instagrams or you, Twitter, mate. You, you played with him? What's he, what's he like I to play I didn't play with him, Simo. I played against him a few times. Did you? But yeah, yeah, I played against him a few times. Just, uh, yeah, just your typical winger, innit? He just hides that on the wing, doesn't do much, and <laughs> um, just looks well, doesn't he? You, I've got something to say about him, but I might be 
drop in a minute a little go on, bit. Then. Go on, Loz. Um, <laughs> Chev told me the story. <laughs> Of, um, they were playing on the Sunday and they had the team photo on the Tuesday and when Franny announced it, Jamie Foster says, oh, I hope I don't get cut during the game. Oh, oh, oh dear. Didn't want to cut on his team photo. <laughs> oh dear. Also has a spray tan before every Sky game. Oh! <laughs> 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 exclusive. Oh dear. Never bothered me, that. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of rugby league banter now. Um, Dan Sargenson, the from Wigan, he, likes, uh, he loves to banter, does Sarge? Yeah, he's got some good banter on his page, and you know they hit back at each other. These two ex-London teammates with Omar Ricardo. Uh, you can see him there getting picked up at the back, and uh, Dan Sargenson's put a nice little picture of a handbrake underneath. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> That's great banter, Simo. I like it. I like that. It's hit straight back, isn't it? <laughs> so, Omar Ricardo, to his credit, you know, Sargentson's got into him a little bit and, and give him the old handbrake. So he's come back at him with a look-alike. Keeper-like. He's said, uh, yeah, a keeper-like. Keep you could make it a threesome, that one there. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, got a nice picture of Dan Sargentson with Voldemort. Impressive one. <laughs> What do you think, Simo? Good likeness? Or? I think it's a good, Dan Sadison's actually on the radio with us. And obviously, we do the radio every Monday on All Star FM. And uh, he's on the radio with us in a couple of weeks, so we'll get his uh, opinion on that one. I think it's time for the video, Simo. The videos. The videos. <laughs> Roll on the videos. <laughs> now, this first one, it's, it's only for the eagle eyed viewer. Just uh, watch out. We've had an injured guy from St. Helens, and this is how they've been looking after him, keeping him off his feet. This is, this is an exclusive WhatsApp video. It's an exclusive, it's not in the public Chasing domain. Chasing kids, yet. there's a kid there running away. <laughs> and here he comes, the hobo himself. <laughs> Flashing his lights. <laughs> the big mirror himself. <laughs> legend. What a legend, eh? What a legend. What a legend. <laughs> Sports science at its greatest. And this is a, the next one's a secret video, is it, Simo. Is yeah. this, you film this yourself? I, I, well, no, I can't, I can't say I filmed it. You filmed it. I'm not going to admit to this you one. You filmed it. This is on an electrician's course we've been doing. <laughs> 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 the Polish power that is The Polish screwing. power, look at the arms on him. He's, uh, oh, he's really struggling to thread the wires, his screws, and getting a little bit frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> How's he got a job with his dad, Kerbo? <laughs> well, he says he's just in demolition now. He can't, he can't build anything or fix anything, but he can smash things up, the pole. <laughs> the big angry pole. Uh, the big angry pole's been come to his team this year. Has it been good to have him around the place? Yeah, he's been great. He's, uh, He's great for banter, you know. Um, his missus works at the club, she's sorted him out a real good deal. So, <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's been good to have Scroots around the place, a real good guy. Right, um, well, that's about it for social media, and it's also about it for the first Rugby AM show. Let me thank Wagga, you've been amazing. Make some noise. Always. <laughs> Danny Kermon, social media king. Okay. Old Buster, Jamie Jones Buchanan. The legend, Keith Senior. The beautiful Warren Walker. All our studio guests, all the people in the audience, Premier Sports Ooh. TV, we love you. I'm Alex Simmons, this has been Rugby Over TV. We'll see you next month for another great dose of Rugby League and banter. BAM is brought to you in association with Reactive Insurance.
for your home and life insurance needs.